Uh, my career, unfortunately, I have to say many, many years. Uh, but I've been fortunate enough from the beginning, I guess. My career implied the ability to work for very important financial institutions all over the world. And then I decided in 2017 to be in charge of technologies for Deutsche Bank. At that time, we were talking about artificial intelligence, blockchain, and uh, IoT, which was absolutely a novelty for uh, banking in that period. Then I exited Deutsche Bank. I worked for a blockchain uh, uh, company in Ireland and then consultancy for a couple of years and then 2020 Batelco made the call. Well when I joined Beyond Group at that time was uh, Batelco basically it was pretty clear from the board and the stakeholders and the management that they wanted to start something that did not exist before in Bahrain so they wanted to branch out in financial services and then build something that did not exist and that was uh, my pitch, if you want, to, to the board, where say we can do something that doesn't exist. We don't need to create a bank, but we need to create something that looks like a bank in the eyes of the clients, but leveraging the technology, the latest technology, a partnership with players from all over the world. We had eight months, and during those eight months, we had to collect the license of the central bank, build the technology, close relationship with vendors, develop uh, the, uh, a platform and hiring people. And we did, I would say in eight months, we were ready. And then in January 2022, we launched. So it was, a, I think, a very interesting story. So the first thing that we did, we said, we need to be fast because clients will trust us only if we allow them the ability and the usability that in two minutes, they can be on board just with an ID one phase verification uh, and then at that point they just receive a card. The second point was we want to issue a prepaid card, which we did, with the features of credit card. Now by doing that we democratize the access to a payment instrument because a card is a payment instrument, but while the debit card doesn't provide any kind of perks, the credit card does, but it does at a cost and first of all you have to be approved to be eligible for a credit card, we place ourselves in the middle. So the concept in a nutshell was technology, usability, uh, what we call UX, UI, but mostly democratization and accessibility of services that otherwise people would not be able to have. Yeah, there's no secret actually. We announced uh, last, uh, last year that we are spending starting from UAE. We received the license already from ADGM, from Abu Dhabi Global Market. We are in the process to complete also the license with Central Bank UAE. Of course, the market is 10 times bigger than, than Bahrain. There's a lot of competition. Uh, in terms also of uh, financial service provider digital opportunities, there is a much broader offer in that market, which requires different dynamics and competition and uh, speed of response. And then, of course, we are also on the path of expanding to KSA, especially because it's a dynamic change and the, the, uh, the citizens and the, the people living there are relatively young. So almost 70% uh, of people are below 35, 37 years old, which means much more prone to the change, much more prone to the digital instrument as payments and financial services. We try to look for perfection and we're not there yet. Right? Because we, and we'll never be there, probably, because every, every month we need to perfect what we did the months before. So we need to constantly adjust. Just to give you uh, something that maybe sounds too technical, but we have had last year almost 13 releases. Releases is when you have a new functionality, a new product, a new service, an adjustment to the app. In order to do that, you need to be absolutely fast. Uh, I always say to my team that we cannot have an app that doesn't change in two or three months because otherwise it becomes automatically old. The concept of uh, affection, uh, the concept of loyalty doesn't exist anymore. Clients, of course, are bombarded by opportunities, novelty, and they change, they dynamically look around. Because every time that you launch a financial app, sometimes you have to look at the user experience, you have to look at the user journey, you have to look if the client abandoned the apps in certain uh, moment that you tap in. If it does, how do you adjust? How do you create additional engagement? And that is a constant evolution. And just for your idea, we don't have a physical contact with the clients. We don't have branches. For us, the, the, the point of contact is the app. And if they abandon the app at one point, that's a sign that something is wrong. Either the product is wrong, the price is wrong, usability is wrong, or the client doesn't like, doesn't seem interested in that. So we need to be appealing at the same time, make sure that we regain the usage of the clients and the trust of the clients in case something doesn't work in the app. We have done great progress, I think. We, we have gained the trust, but sometimes we need to explain to them over and over digitally because we cannot approach 100,000 clients with call center or with the physical contacts, and that's uh, the key of success. 
Of course, we are using some company like Beyond Cyber. He is part of Beyond Group that uh, guarantees the maximum security in the app. We're using AWS, which of course provides the maximum security in terms of the cloud uh, uh, solution that we have. We use a Visa partner, which of course uh, allows any kind of fraud in terms of card. We have a processor, which is state-of-the-art uh, technology in terms of preventing crimes. We have another provider that also allows us to avoid any kind of money laundering or potential issues that may happen. Because obviously we need to make sure that from the reputational point of view towards the regulators and towards our clients, we are seen as a reliable partner. As a CEO, I mean, of, of a fintech that started two years ago, I have to say not an easy challenge, but so far we have a challenge of 100% growth year over year. So the next few years, of course, they're very challenging. The speed is key because you understand that once you have these kind of targets, uh, if you divide those targets by every month, you cannot fail one month. If you fail one month, then the target is not achieved. And, uh, and you need to balance the best, uh, the expectation of the clients, uh, the team, which of course works under stress, the people are absolutely key in order to make sure that you can perform constantly for years with this kind of speed, right? It's not just a sprint that you have for one week. You have to share with them the growth that we want to achieve in one country one year and then say, okay, great, now repeat again and again and again. And that requires really a great effort with the people in the team to make sure that we work in speed, precision, regulation, respect, and that's the balance of an equation that we need to strike.